What's up, everybody? I am back. It is Monday, December 11th. Um, we've got a six-game slate tonight, which is me, but I'll take it. Um, took yesterday off. The late three-game set looked terrible. Uh, it was good to take off two out of the last three days, really, just take a break from it all. Um, today we're going to do this breakdown video. We'll have a live before lock starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, the first tip isn't until 8 tonight. Um, and then we'll get back in the swing of things for this week. Um, I'm going to work on the website a little bit today and try to get um, try to get a couple more things put on there now that the, the projections are going to be housed there instead of um, in the Google Sheet. But other than that, everything should be business as usual. So let's just dive in now, and we'll take a look at the first game. Bulls hosting the Boston Celtics. Um, the Bulls have a 96-point implied total, which is dead last on the day. I sense a theme with uh, the Bulls now. Um, marking in on DK, I don't have to look any further. He's just... A, a really good play. And then probably David Nawaba as well on DK. FanDuel is going to be a little bit different. Pricing has just been so tight lately. It's not fun. Okay. I think six games should be good. I'd like one more. Seven seems like a perfect number for me. Okay. Nope, that's Chicago against Chicago. Okay, so corner threes. This is not to, not to. Ooh, I can't even talk. This does not feel like a Justin Holiday day. Um, Rolo looks pretty interesting here. Fifty three hundred needs twenty six and a half. How's he been doing? He's been steady. Take a little bit deeper of a look. It's the kind of guy that could be really important today. So, not blocking as many shots this year, which is kind of a bummer. Or rebounding the ball. Offensively, that is. Hmm. I'll actually, I'm, I'm willing to take a look at him. You know, as the pay down option of a center tonight. Yeah. Um, David Nawaba, 4,500, maybe 22. How's he been playing? Put up 30 in the past two. Ah, oh, God, no, it's digi. <laughs> David Nawaba might be worth a look. You don't want to have too many pieces coming here. So DK, um, especially, these Bulls guys look <clears throat> much more in play than they do on FanDuel. Um, yeah, I'm going to pass on everybody else. <clears throat> God. It's this butter coffee, man. As I go right back to it. Okay, uh, to the Celtics. 103.5 implied total. Eighth on the night. Uh, Marcus Smart likely out. No official word as of yet, but uh, the projections have the assumption that he is out. So we're going to want to look at 
all of the big players for Boston. Bastian Nakbar. Holy shit. Some interesting names if you start typing random characters into um, into the search. Okay. So could be a good game for threes, but nothing crazy. Other than limiting that stuff in the floater range, they don't really do too much defensively. So we want to look at Irving, Horford, Tatum, and Brown. Yeah. Irving is at 83, so that needs 41. Why is this all spread out? Because of the date. Whatever, I don't have the time to care. 41, so he's in and around there. Hasn't had a big night in a while. I prefer to take him in a scenario where they're going to be pacing up a game. This doesn't seem like it. You know, Chris Dunn is a good defender, so I don't think Irving is going to be two in play here and there's other things to like at point guard so pass there um Jalen needs 27 he's only done it once lately I gotta change this damn date this looks terrible um It's gonna do it again here. That's so weird. When I'm grouping this thing by the date, it's pushing the tenth out to the wrong side in December and not sorting the dates correctly. Which is rather annoying. Alright, it's just gonna have to be spread out, I guess. I feel like it could be a decent Jalen night. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't. I don't. None of this is jumping off the page for me as good. Marcus Smart looks okay on DK. Tatum, thirty-one. Ooh. What did they do the last time Marcus Morris was out just by himself? It wasn't there? Wasn't one? It was just this most recent one. Yeah, I don't love anything in there. It, something might pop up, but <clears throat> that, I'll dig into that deeper later. So we'll go to the Rockets. Um, Houston hosting the Pelicans. 119.25 implied total, which is number one on the night. Houston, 12-point favorites. Um, I don't have to tell you who's interesting for this team. I am still a little mad at Clint Capella for his performance Saturday night. That did not go well for me. I just don't get Capella. Like, it's... He's very different games over and over again. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a game for the shooters. And I gotta look at everybody. Eric Gordon is popping off the page right now big time. 4,700. Did his salary drop... Forty-eight. He has not done anything of value really lately. Has he been bad this year? We had. Ah, no, he's right on point. Okay. So Paul is at nine thousand. 
which is 45 fantasy point for value. He's only done it once, just under it in the most recent one. Um, nobody to really worry about, though, on the Pell, so I like Paul. And 11-8 for Harden. Again, uh, seems like a great game for Harden. I will look at Gordon. Probably not on DK as much as FanDuel. Ariza at 54, so that's 27. It's kind of his cash ceiling. I'm not even looking at you, Capella. You're a jerk. Uh, some, of the, some of these games, you just go ham. I just don't get it. Ryan Anderson, 4,000. So he needs 20. <laughs> Nothing like play, putting up 35 in 35 minutes and then putting up 2 in 17. Dude's just got an ability to disappear at three. I mean, I know, like, you know, he was out, but crazy. Mba Mute, minimum salary. Yeah, and he should be. Yeah, that's probably it. It's just Paul, Harden, Gordon in some order. Let's go to lapels. Pels with the 107.25 implied total, fifth on the night. Two of these games don't have actual lines. They were uh, made up by me. That would be Warriors, Blazers, and uh, Thunder and Hornets. Um, so, yeah, Rondo for sure. We want to look at – we got to look at everybody. Um – I'm hoping that we get, like, one piece of news that opens up some interesting value. It feels tight tonight. You know, we need, like, a... I don't know. What would be good? Like, Kyle Lowry out or something like that. Probably help if I actually copied in the data. Okay, so we want to look at Drew. Probably not going to look at Etom Moore. We want to look at Drew and Rondo, and then the the two biggies. So Rondo, fifty six hundred. So that's twenty eight. Put up fifty seven last night. So, you know. What's his history against Chris Paul? Nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a highly stacked game, that's for sure. Drew Holiday, 6,800, so he needs 34. Big game last night, 52 fantasy points. 34 is not bad. What's his salary done? He's dropped. He was up in the like mid to high sevens, wasn't he? Yeah. Back down to 68. I like it. Um, I might have to take a look at that. Yeah. There's a lot to like here. I like being able to fit in those pieces together. Now, AD and Boogie. AD at 10-6. He put up 59.6 last night in 40 minutes. Um, he needs 53. No reason to suspect that can't happen. And then Boogie at 12. Needs 60. I 
I don't think that one's for me. My only concern is that he is by far the highest paid center tonight by $3,200. But I think it'll be safer to get somebody in here that pops off the page and then to go with like an AD Harden stack or something. Yeah, let's do that for right now. We'll see where it ends up. Man, that looks good. That's a lot out of that game. It should just be, you know, that style of game, though. Now, from uh, a fun one to a not as fun one, the Memphis Grizzlies hosting the Miami Heat. Memphis, 98 point implied total, which is 10th, and they are the favorites by a point and a half. Whoa, Nelly, this one stinks. So, we've got Tyreek and Marcus Gasol is basically it. Andrew Harrison, if you're feeling froggy on DK. 3,500. This is one of those um, awful games that you don't want any part of. You don't want to cheer for it. It's just not fun. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and love Gasol tonight. Especially, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't even need to look at anything else. Um, no white side, so Gasol is going to just, he's going to do bad things to Bam Adebayo. And, I mean, what is Kelly Olenek's chances? Like zero. Gasol might be one of my favorite plays. How's he been playing? That's really all that matters. He needs 42. Just short of it in the last one. But he's been 30 plus. So it's not cratering. And he has been over that in the two games before that. So this seems like the perfect matchup for him. Aside from the fact that it's just like a slowed down game. Tyreek needs 38. Put up 53 two nights ago. A little boom and busty, but I'm willing to take that look. Yeah, that'll work. Off to Miami now. 96.5 implied total, which is just dreadful. Um, 11th on the night. Half point ahead of the lowly Bulls. Nothing really jumping out. I guess Tyler Johnson is probably the only real piece to take a look at. Watch wants me to stand up. It's crazy. I'm recording. Doesn't it know that? I have a sneaky suspicion I'm going to put together a lineup I really like tonight, which I hope is the case because I was really down on Saturday. And in those situations, I, I just need to pull I need to pull out okay Tyler Johnson and if I didn't like Gasol so much I'd take a look at Olenek I guess I will take a look at Olenek and then maybe Josh Richardson Richardson 46 so he needs 23 I I never get him right. It's, I'm not looking at it anymore. Olenek needs 30. That's probably his ceiling. And then Tyler Johnson needs 23. He's been playing better lately. Um, nope, that's Tyreek again. There we go. Tyler Johnson's the only piece of the puzzle I like here. And that's, I don't want to be on this game any longer. But, whew, Marcus Gasol. Almost positive I'm going to end up with him. Unless something really crazy happens at center. Uh, OKC um, hosting the Hornets. There's no line on this game right now based on like the cavalcade of Hornets that could potentially be out plus Paul George. So I have a, the line right now at Thunder minus 6. 
and it puts the middle of the pack in terms of um, implied total. So it should be in and around that area. Let's grab uh, the Thunder details. And I think that if Paul George is playing, he's going to be very much in play tonight. It looked like he was popping off the page as a small forward. Um, Charlotte. Okay. Doesn't feel like the best Russ game. How's Dwight been at drawing fouls? Or having fouls drawn on him, I guess. Okay, so... He's been good. I guess. This feels more like a Mellow and George game than anybody else. Look closer at these guys. Okay, I'm fine with my George projection. I'm fine with my mellow projection. So George is at 78, which means he needs 39. Hasn't played in the last two. Two kind of stinkers before that, before a 60 pointer. I like it. And then Mello needs 35. I probably wouldn't go there unless George was out. Yeah, I like the sound of that. And then I'm not probably going to take a look at Steven Adams, although at 5,900 on DK, I think he's much more in play. But he does need 32. And he's been up over 30. Is He's just been really good, huh? Yeah. Steven Adams has been a really good fantasy center this year. Ooh. Maybe I shouldn't just disregard him. Adams and Dwight. How has Dwight done against Adams in the past? Not good. What the hell team was Dwight on last year? Rockets. Last two years, right? Right? No. Hawks? Fuck it. It doesn't matter. God, how many teams has Dwight Howard played for? Charlotte, Atlanta, Houston, Lakers, Orlando. Jesus, dude, is everywhere. It was the Hawks. Okay. How did Steven... Eh, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Steven Adams looks... Looks like a perfectly reasonable play. I don't think I'll go that far down. I'd rather have Marcus All. I will list him because that'll be silly not to, just in case. That was a terrible inner monologue. Let's keep going. Uh, to the Hornets. Right now I've got him at 100.75, which would be ninth. Um, everybody is playing that can play, including Frank the Tank, who's probably the only person I want to look at with any sort of close eye. I forgot I didn't have to record a recap video or anything this morning and it's 6.55. I looked at it and thought it was 7.55 and was ready to freak out. I was wondering how, why this was taking as long as it was, but I'm actually just an hour ahead of where I normally am. Okay, so it's Kemba and it's Marvin Williams. Okay, and Frank the Tank. So Kemba, 83, um, screwed me on Saturday by not playing well. Okay, Kemba against um, Russ could be interesting. How has he done in the past? You know, he's taken to it pretty well. Hmm. 
needs 41. I'll entertain that. And then Frank the Tank needs 20. He's been out, but if he gets 25 minutes, I mean, he's going to look pretty good. I've got him at 22 minutes right now, being conservative. Um, but that feels like a really good spot for him. How has he been playing on a per-minute basis? Not good. Not good at all. Going to be... Uh, I think he's going to pop up in my lineups, but I don't know how married I'm going to be to that thought process. So now I'll head to the Warriors. Uh, again, this line doesn't exist right now. Um, I'm assuming, or we have Nurkic out, and then I'm assuming like all of the normal guys except for Curry are in. So I've got Golden State as the second highest implied total when it comes out, along with um, Portland being fourth, and I have Golden State favored by nine. <laughs> This will be the other game that will likely have lots of pieces. <sighs> I can really feel it doing these videos when I um when I like take a day off or in this case two out of three. Like I just I feel disconnected from the NBA even though very little changes about what I'm doing. It's just not it's amazing how much doing this video and like talking about everything and keeping everything fresh in my head matters. Okay, well, we want Durant and Clay. I liked Durant a lot when I first opened up the program. Yeah, let's look at Durant and Clay. Durant is 11 7. Whew. Let's just say he needs 60. Well, he's been there. So, Kevin Durant, come on down. And then, how has Durant done in games in Portland? Yeah, could have easily been there. Never done, you know, anything crazy. Interesting. Play. 75 means 37. And that's a lot. In that case, you're betting on shooting. It's a good game to bet on shooting, though. I guess I need to look at Draymond. 42, no Nurkic. He's put up 50 plus in his last two. They're just so good at limiting threes. Why are they good at limiting threes? Have they always been? Weren't they shit? What did they just talk about on Dunked On? Oh, something ridiculous. Something weird is going on with the uh, Blazers shooting defense. So frequency, where are they? Defense, defense, defense. Portland. Okay, so they're always good at limiting that frequency. Okay, that yeah, there it is. So you'll see here, um, you know, for the past couple years, and they've they've largely been the same team. They've always been really good at limiting the frequency of threes. The reason they've looked so good this year on defense is because they are fourth in the league in three-point percentage against and through all the studies that I've seen um, three-point percentage against is essentially random you can only really control for the volume not necessarily for how they go in and this year compared to the last two they've been incredibly advantageous um, for limiting the threes that have gone in so that does make me like clay a little bit more I am not gonna go to Draymond 
but I do like Durant and, and Clay tonight. Now we'll go to Portland, where it will likely be a one or the other night. I don't see wanting to go too many different directions. Wow, CJ McCollum at 6,800. He's been so not good this year. It's insane. Um, Golden State Warriors. So obviously they're going to give up a ton of um, mid-range stuff. I think that fits CJ really well. Yeah. Yes, it does. So tonight feels like the CJ game. He needs 35. And recently he was right at it. Hasn't had a big game in a while. If he's going to do it, this feels like the spot. Like I said, no Nurkic. I don't think anybody, any of the bigs come into play. Aminu at 53 is probably too expensive. That's really sort of exactly where he's supposed to be. Dame at 9-3, so he'd need 47-ish. He's been there the last three. Over 40 in five of his last six. I don't know if it's good or bad that Steph's not in for him. Yeah, I'm going to hitch my wagon to CJ instead. Let's go to that last game. Clippers and Raptors. Um, Clippers have a 104.5 implied total, which is 7th. And the news out of LA is that uh, Taya Dosic uh, could be playing tonight. I've got him in for 25 minutes right now. He's at 4,400. Uh, you know, I don't... I'm, he's not very safe in cash as, as of right now. I just kicked my light so if anybody's drinking while they watch this uh, drinking game says drink every time I kick the light I think like I mean Tay Dosage looks okay at DK 3800 if he's playing but I don't trust it I mean I'm not taking a guy that's basically played two NBA games and now half of the team isn't there any longer although Gallo is back I guess so Pretty much just Beverly and Blake. Um, yeah, no, I don't want any part of this Clippers game. Lou Williams at 84. Has his salary done anything? Yeah, gone up. Okay. I'm not taking any part of this. Austin Rivers, 60, so that's 32. I guess maybe I look at Austin Rivers. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, if you're going to take Austin Rivers, you just go down to Rondo. And if you want Lou Williams, you know, you'd probably rather drop down to Tyreek. Yeah, I don't want any part of the Clippers. To Toronto, let's find out if it's a Lowry game or a DeRozan game. And then Yaka Pertle at 3,700 on DK is, um, is very much in play, just right off the bat. Shit, I just looked at the Clippers D against Golden State. It doesn't matter. I didn't want the Clippers regardless. Um, so, it's probably a DeRozan game. Oh, 
Although Lowry could really roast Taya Dosich if he doesn't play. <sighs> Tired. Monday, guys. Dragon ass. Needs 44. It's been above 40 in five straight. 110 implied total, which is third. I like a lot of the top of the board right now, which is super duper scary. Surge at 27. It's been there four straight. That's probably it for me on this side. I think just Jakob Pertl opens up over here on DK. Same for OG Ananobi at 3,500. I think that opens up. He's been playing some increased minutes. It's been bad, but I think that opens him up for a GPP, but not for cash. Okay, so that's the short list. I don't have a clue how this is going to shake out when I optimize. Point guard, shooting guard, small forwards... Only two small forwards that I listed were Durant and Paul George. And like, I try not to pay attention to positions while I'm going through that, so that's interesting. I'm anxious to see how that comes up when I click run, because if it's predominantly those two, I don't know where the value is going to come out of to get any of the good like point guards and shooting guards that I liked. So, going to be weird. Let's do it. Let's figure out what the placeholder is. It's going to put somebody in there in an overwhelming amount that I don't like that just has like a good projection on the surface. I think we're going to see a lot of Rondo. A lot. Paul George will be in almost all of the lineups. I hope Marc Gasol is. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to get to all these guys. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting balancing act. So let's run 50. Let's see where we end up. Ooh, got to randomize a little bit. Okay, this should be good. <laughs> Okay, so I fully expected a lot of that. Point guard, Rondo, 75% of those lineups. Love it. Um, and then it's either Russ or Paul, which makes me happy because I think that I can go Paul, and right there that saves me $2,200 over Russ. Even though... Russ and Paul are in my optimal. Um, so let's say Rondo for sure. Then at shooting guard, we're looking at CJ 88% of the time. That makes me super happy. So he's a for sure lock. And then it's split between Drew, Eric Gordon, and Eton Moore. You know, Eric Gordon might be in play there. As a, as a balancing act, which, well, I'd probably, if I took Eric Gordon, then I probably would go down to Kemba at point guard. So small forward, Paul George, 100% of the time. Down to 7800 That's a $1,200 drop. It's the lowest his price has been. So um, I see no reason that he's not locked in. Unless we hear negative things about his health. And then we have... That can be filler. That second small forward spot. We'll find somebody in a good matchup. Power forward is 50% Draymond. And then a spread of Aminu, Mello, Tatum, Mba, Mute. Um, that's a bit more of a concern. Abaka does show up. So this could be like a Mello and a Baca scenario. Kaminsky's there as well. No sign of AD, which is concerning. He usually pops, and that lower salary usually makes him pop even more. So we'll see when I re-optimize. 
And then Jakob Pertl. Is that still up? 4,500, 23 minutes. Has he been like really good on a per minute basis? Where the hell are you? Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah, no, not really. 22. Like when his salary was at 3500 uh, That one I don't get. Unless the assumption is that he just does really well in the second unit. You know, we've got Gasol here and Lopez here. No sign of Steven Adams. So right now I just locked Rondo, CJ, Paul George. We'll see how that responds. Andrew Harrison. It gives me the yucks. Okay. That's a lot of Nawaba popping. 4,500. Two straight games in the 30s, and he needs 22. Maybe I shouldn't have disregarded David Nwaba. Yeah. I might have to play him. 4,500 opens up a lot. Not gonna go Russ. So let's see what that does. So that becomes Chris Paul. And that should open up a lot of interestingness. I don't want to go Mello and George. I feel like that's a bad fit. So I can get to AD in 28% of the lineups. Okay. Let's do that. What do the rest of them look like? Optimal was 291.90. So I'm barely dropping off of that right now. Gordon, Mbamute, Horford. So Horford, 75. Does that bring Marcus Gasol out of play there? Yeah, it has to. So we'll keep Gordon for now. Actually, I'll undo that keep Gordon idea and we'll check Rolo and see where that ends up. Shit, I don't need 50 lineups of that. My two spots left. So that gives me Eton Moore and Aminu. Gordon and Aminu. Eton Moore and Abaka. Yeah, I'd probably do Gordon and Abaka here. Okay, so there's the placeholder. And I don't hate that at all. I won't end up with this, but that works. Paul Rondo, McCollum, Eric Gordon, Paul George, Nawaba, A.D. Abaka, Rolo. I don't hate that at all. Outside of the Chris Paul, Eric Gordon stack, which I assume has not been good together from a fantasy perspective. What a terrible headline. <laughs> Lose the wince. It's not a fucking word. It's 
It's not even a pun. It's just wrong. Um, what am I looking up? Okay, how is Chris Paul done with? This will be the last thing we look at with Eric Gordon. What do shit is loading? Awesome. Well, that might be something we take a look at during the live stream tonight, since uh, it doesn't seem to be loading itself now. So that's going to be it. That is the strategy video for today. Um, if you liked it, I would love for you to like it on YouTube. If you didn't like it, I'd love for you to like it on YouTube. Uh, subscribe. Uh, check out the website. Link is above. That's going to be where the projections are housed now, either joshengelman.com slash DraftKings or joshengelman.com slash FanDuel. Um, check out Patreon if you're really stoked about the things that I've been doing. Uh, we'll be back tonight at, um, at 7 o'clock for a live before lock. Uh, lock is at 8 o'clock tonight. Okay, there's Chris Paul, Eric Gordon. Major negative... Um, negative correlation so instead of Eric Gordon it's going to be Eton Moore which is fine anyway uh, that's everything I've got guys uh, if you need anything from me today hit me up on Twitter uh, Twitter handles up there um, or check me out on the Reddit DFS sports group uh, send me an email do whatever you need to do I'll be around um, that's it thank you